Live from the Royal Palace in Vizima, it's time for the Nilfgaard Rundown. Ladies and gentlemen, I am back from Warsaw. We got to go to Warsaw this week, and when I say we, I'm talking about me and five other content creators, my co-host on the Commander's Horn podcast, Grey Boxer, as well as King Blacktooth, Merchant, Chaotic Priest, and Mega Mogwai, and we had the absolute pleasure of playing and recording some Nilfgaard footage that I would like to take you through today. Today, on the menu, we're looking at this collection next to me. You can see there are 44 Nilfgaard cards. That's 18 bronzes, 14 silvers, 9 golds, and 3 liters, of course. Now, first of all, check out all those content creators' videos. We're all releasing some stuff because it is embargo o'clock. But I would like to tell you one thing. We played a couple of builds, and in both of the builds that we got to play in which we got this footage from, the builds were not final. There is still tuning on the numbers, and I think while the spirit of the cards will be correct, and that the cards will still do what they are doing. If you see certain values, they may be a little off. They may need a little bit of tweaking. But you've waited long enough, folks. Let's get into the 44 Nilfgaard cards. The order of review is gonna be the three leaders. We're gonna start them off, and we're gonna start off with my friend right here, Mr. EVE, the Emperor Emir. And we'll go right into that right now. So, so this right here is our good friend Emir. Uh, we did know about this ability. It came through on the day of the live stream, which I participated in. It was one of the two small pieces of information that was released, released about Nilfgaard. The first of all being the faction ability, which, which allows for a mulligan at the beginning of each round, uh, similar to the uh, active ability of Squayatel. Choosing who goes first, you choose to mulligan a card. Um, you choose to mulligan a card at the beginning of the round. So you get two extra mulligans to refine your hand. And the other thing we learned about was Emir, which is reveal two random cards from the opposing hand. This by itself, I personally think this is a very powerful tool to be used in a game where knowing what your opponent has and putting them on their cards is so important. Uh, knowing what some of those cards are, I think it's a little understated. I know that metas get very solidified in some cases. Uh, there are some cookie cutter lists but I really do think that revealing two random cards in your opponent's hand is pretty strong. And he's not the only card in this set that will do it. A lot of cards do it. There is probably a build with Emir where you can look at your opponent's entire hand. It is absolutely crazy. But him by himself, this is the leader you'd want, the leader you'd want to run uh, in that case. So there's Emir. We've had a lot of time to kind of pontificate upon this ability because we've known it the longest. Um, but we can look at the other leaders as well. And what I really like about uh, the leaders in Nilfgaard is that they really remind me of the leaders in Scoia'tael. And Scoia'tael, when they play, all of their leaders have a great representation. You see uh, very close to the same amounts of Ethna, Bruverhug, and Francesca, since they all do different things for your deck, but none of them really super niche. So in the case of Emir, we have a card that affects the hand. And I feel like Francesca is a card that does that. And with uh, Morvran here, we have a card that affects the cards in your deck. Much like Bruver Hoog, we have a guy who can pull any disloyal, disloyal unit out of your deck and play it. So you can mulligan any spy you want, and you can use him as you will find out. Nilfgaard has a lot of disloyal cards. So this leader, at first glance, you may need some context to know why he's quite good. Uh, and especially the next leader as well. But being able to play any card out of your deck means you never have to hold it. It means deck thinning. It means you have something on call whenever you need it, very much like Brewer Hoog. So I feel like he is going to be that kind of leader in a deck that specializes in running disloyal cards. But I think a lot of Nilfgaard decks are going to be running disloyal cards because their disloyal units are quite good at the moment. So speaking of the disloyal units, the last leader that we're going to talk about is our good friend John Calvit. John Calvit moves all disloyal or spying now as it is shown on the tooltip here move all spying non-gold units to your side of the battlefield so again like square as hell this is kind of like ethna a card that affects cards on the board so i think that when you look at that structure i think that we have a very healthy selection of leaders here john calvert is really interesting because you can send a lot of high value spies over um over and, or, and low value spies as well. There's going to be a lot of spies on the board if you're playing Nilfgaard. And in the mirror, this card is absolutely nutty. Um, but really, it's about faction spies. 
Uh, so you move them all back to your side of the board to do with them what you wish. Just take their strength, perhaps replay them in some way. Uh, you have a lot of options. This was my favorite leader to test. Personally, I had the most experience with this card and the gameplay videos that I will be providing to you will be mostly from the perspective of this leader, uh, although I do play against an Emir in an early game as monsters. But we'll talk about that later when I release the gameplay video. Let's keep going. We're going to go through the bronze cards now. There's 18 bronze cards, and we're going to start off with a blockbuster. This card is really something. This is the medic of Nilfgaard. So Nilfgaard does have a medic. It is essentially a bronze caretaker. One strength unit, place them on the range row. Vicovaro medic, place a bronze unit from the opposing graveyard on your side seems really good. This card felt very strong when playing. Obviously a matchup that is incredible against uh, it, really any, uh, any, any faction that has a resurrection capability. You deny them that by taking stuff out of their graveyard and it is very strong against Skellig which continues to have more and more graveyard play. But I think this card is good anyway. I think that there's no matchup in which this card will not help you. I think that some matchups are better than others, the way your deck is tuned, but this card is just straight up strong. You're gonna wanna put at least two or three into most Nilfgaard decks. I really can't think of a deck in which you wouldn't wanna use this because it's a bronze caretaker. It's a bronze caretaker for bronze cards. Bronze cards are good and they're gonna get better and there's a lot of bronze cards coming. If you wanna count Nilfgaard alone, you got 18 bronze cards right there. And every faction gets another two bronze cards. So. That's the information I have for you. Vic of Aromatic, it's just going to be a really good card. You're going to see a lot of it. You might not like it. You're going to see it a lot. Um, especially, this is really going to hurt Skellig a matchup, I think. Um, that's all there is to say about that, I think. It's very straightforward what it does. We've been playing Caretaker for a very long time. While it doesn't pull silvers, of course, that would be nutty to have three cards that pull silvers. You're definitely going to want to play this card. One of the strongest cards in the set, and I do believe I am not alone in thinking that. But we'll continue on. Bronze disloyal units, we have arrived. The ambassador is a two strength unit. You play on your opponent's melee row. It adds, at the time of this recording and at the time of my recording, 12 strength to a random non gold unit on your side of the battlefield. So, stipulation you need to have another unit on the board besides uh, something else that's gold. Cool. You'll need to have something on the board. Second thing is, essentially, when you do have that stipulation met, you are now going up. 10 strength buffed because you're giving your opponent two strength. I think this is a little on the high side and I think that it may be tuned, but we don't know what is actually going to be tuned as this video is coming up before the patch and before the CD Projekt Red live stream. At this time, this card felt quite good. I will not, I will say that playing a bronze uh, a bronze card for a guaranteed 12 uh, sorry, a guaranteed 10 strength because of the disloyal aspect of it. Um, felt very strong, especially with all the ways that you can interact with your opponent's board with Nilfgaard as well. So a bronze card for 10 with the one stipulation, it seems actually not that crazy, as you do need to have another card on the board, but you probably will. Uh, so I think that this card is, this card felt very good. I did play with it. I, again, if you're playing a deck that focuses around disloyal cards, this is the card for you, for sure. Moving on, we have Emissary, another two strength disloyal bronze card. The Emissary is a deck thinning disloyal, and this card is really good, I gotta say. You give your opponent two strength on the range row, and you get to play the top non-gold unit from the deck. So it's never gonna play a gold card for you, but it's gonna play a card off the top of your deck every time. And if it plays something like a Medic, or another Spy that actually draws you another card, or plays another card for you, and there are those cards, you can chain some stuff out here, and it's actually a really good card to play probably turn one. Generally, you're gonna get more out of it than your opponent. I think two strength is a little low for this card. I think the effect is really strong. I like this card a lot. I played three emissaries and three ambassadors in the test deck that I did. Time will tell. I definitely am looking forward to seeing the other content creators uh, viewpoints on these cards. I think this is a good card and I think people will be playing this card for sure. Combat Engineer, a three strength siege unit loyal Keep a non-gold unit on the battlefield at the end of this round. So it's Adrenaline Rush with a body. You can, you can draw your own conclusions from that. Nilfgaard is about playing big units. It's not about swarming. It's about playing disloyal units and playing big units and having big buffs when you have the opportunity to do so. Combat Engineer might see play. I personally didn't test it. We didn't have a ton of time. We had about a, com a combined total of maybe two and a half, three hours to actually play. So I only could build and test so many cards. This was not one of the cards that I tested, but I think 
in a situation where buffs are better than they were because of changes to weather, buffs will remain after weather is cleared, important to note. Keeping a unit on the board is very strong. Monsters are strong because they can reliably do this, and now in the patch they can even more reliably do this. If you haven't seen it in the patch notes yet, you will see it from somebody, but the last card played as, at the time of us being there, the monster passive voice, the last card you played is the card you keep on the battlefield. No RNG there anymore. Very strong. Combat Engineer helps you do similar stuff, and you don't have to play a special card that necessarily is dead on round three, which I don't like about Adrenaline Rush. So, Adrenaline Rush with a body. Would you play three of them? I don't think so. Would you play one of them? Maybe. Would you play two? Maybe. Moving right along, Black Infantry Arbalest. This is a four strength unit you play on the ranged row. Remove two strength from an opposing non-gold unit. If the unit was spying, gain three strength. So this is a card that works kind of like the Dwarven Skirmisher and where there's a stipulation for it to be stronger when played, plus it is removal. Since you're playing a lot of uh, disloyal units as Nilfgaard, such as the two we've already seen, Ambassador and Emissary, you will likely have a target for this card. However, I felt like I was cutting this card in my later trials. Uh, not that I felt like... I felt like it goes very well with the two strength disloyal units, and you don't have to kill the unit to buff it, unlike another card in this set. Um, but I do feel like this card uh, was cuttable at the time, but it really depends on it really depends on the disloyal stuff. It depends on how many disloyal units you want to put in your deck and if you really want to have all those cards to interact with it. Because if you don't have one, it's really it's really just kind of now it's clocking in under average for bronze. So there are a couple of ways to go. Moving right along, we have the Fire Scorpion, a four strength siege unit. Remove three strength from an opposing non-gold unit. This is very similar to the Clan Brockfar Hunter and Skellige in that it is very, very similar. The only difference is, notably, this is a siege unit, whereas the other unit is a ranged unit. And there is a machine tag. And I believe Northern Realms has a card that interacts with machines. I don't believe Nilfgaard does. But there is still a machine tag, which means that machines and and play around machines and cards that interact with machines will be a thing that happens. So this card is notable for having the machine tag, but otherwise is a very standard starter deck type, four plus three equals seven type removal card, much like Ballista, the Clan Brockbar Hunter, uh, the Wyvern, etc., etc. these cards that you know and love. So um, it is a starter card. It is a card that will work very well in starter decks. Always good to remove strength. Uh, although seven is uh, is maybe slightly below average, removal is still kind of priced a little higher than buffs. So there you have it. It's, it is a very good, it is a good, it's a fine starter card, and uh, and uh, it's you know it's one of the more basic ones. The Rot Tosser. This is my this might be my favorite card in the set. I think this card is fantastic. This card is, the flavor of this card and everything it does is quite strong. I like Rot Tosser. I played with three Rot Tossers in my deck. The Rot Tosser is a four strength siege machine loyal unit that spawns a cow carcass on an opposing row of your choice. Now, what is a cow carcass, you might ask? The cow carcass, this is from the collection, after two turns, destroy the weakest non-gold unit on the row and then banish itself. So you're playing this for four. It throws a one strength unit onto a row, any row you want on your opposing unit. And let's say it's a ship, let's say it's Skellige. So now you've got the Rot, to you've got the rot Tosser's Cow Carcass on the top row, one strength, Skellige ship. It has a turn counter of one. So it activates as soon as your turn starts again. So your opponent has one turn to do something about it. And then it will epidemic or plague, however, however you want to call it, it will epidemic uh, the unit on the row, the lowest unit, but that could be a high unit and you could choose the row. So, and it's also a disloyal unit in case you're playing units that interact with or get buffed by disloyal units on the board. This card really does everything and it's really strong removal. I had a game against Merchant which I removed a, t a 10 or a 20 strength unit with this card. This is like one of the better bronzes. This is right up there with Vicavaro Medic. I think this card is really good. Really puts your opponent in a reactionary state and they gotta react. I think the turn timer of one might change. It's really good. I really enjoy playing with this card. It's it's kind of I didn't get it played against me at all, but I just I could kind of there were some times I played it against my opponents and being in the same room as them, I could kind of hear them say, "Oh, what is this?" So th that's this kind of card again. Here's your cow carcass. 
It says after two turns, but when it goes over to your opponent's turn, it ticks over immediately to one. So they really don't have a lot of time to deal with it. So it's, it's quite strong. I love this card a lot. But we have to move on. Another starter-based unit, this is the Nausicaa Standard Bearer. Five strength, any row you want. Very similar to Heime Scald in that it adds two strength to all other non-gold units on the row. You play it on a buff. You play it on a row to buff the row. As we know, buffs are better. So this card might see more play than um, other cards. We do know the Heime Scald sees a lot of play in Skellige, so this card might be used off and on. I'm not really sure if we'll see um, people run three or just two, but I think that it might actually have a place in some deck. So take a. I mean, this is again a very basic starter-esque card. You will see it in the. Uh, in the starter decks, and you'll see a lot of them in kegs. It is, it is, a, it is a common card. It is a common card. All right, let's get through that sentence. The Alba Spearman. This is actually taken from in-game. Uh, I did, I did manage to get all of them. Some, some of the clips are better than others. The Alba Spearman is a six-strength melee unit. Play an instance of this card from your deck for each revealed card in either hand. So. If you have three revealed cards, yours or your opponent's, they all come out. Excellent deck thinning card. It is 18 total strength and it thins your deck. It's Reaver Hunters with a different type of stipulation. As If you look at Reaver Hunters as three six strength cards you play that over time all get played out of your deck without any further involvement for you. You have to do a little bit of setup. You have to reveal three cards overall, either through your own self-revealing, and there are cards that do that. And you get a little perk for that too. Uh, or you can do it to your opponent's hand, but they will all come out. So it's, it's really cool. I didn't get a chance to test these out as I played a more disloyal-based archetype and not a card reveal archetype. Uh, which is cool because you do have those archetypes already existing, much like how there's consume monsters and weather monsters and value monsters. You can get kind of a disloyal based Nilfgaard, a card revealing Nilfgaard, and kind of a combo of both in there. And all the leaders will work. I think that there's going to be a nice variety of decks and a lot of strong cards. Um, this might be one of them if you want to run a very thin deck. There are a lot of cards that thin cards, uh, sorry, a lot of cards that thin decks in Nilfgaard. So we'll keep going. And this. This card is, this card's so strong. I think this card's so strong. The Alchemist is a six strength ranged card. Reveal a random card in your opponent's hand straight up. Six strength, I think it's too, I think it's, I think that's a little high. This is a very good card. If you're running a card that, uh, if you're running a deck that is based on buffs in revealing uh, your opponent's card, you're running Emir at the helm and you're running three of these bad boys. And you're probably running a couple other cards too that reveal cards because this there are still more cards that reveal cards in your opponent's hand as if you needed any more already you've already revealed five cards in your opponent's hand so through the round you get a ton of information and it just does what it says and uh it's really cool the card turns over in your opponent's hand and there's a little magnifying glass over top and when your cards are revealed you see a little magnifying glass at the bottom at the top where your deck is at the bottom, at the top of your cards as well. I have some gameplay footage, you'll get to see this in action, uh, especially in the mirror match. Um, you'll see that a little later. We're going to keep going through these cards, as there are a lot to go through, and this is a pretty straightforward, six strength reveal card in your opponent's hand. It's pretty good. I think this card's pretty good. The Emperor Brigade, another good card that I played with. Six strength on the melee row, gain three strength for each spying unit on the battlefield. As you saw, the Ambassadors, the Emissaries, and the Raw Tosser, even if one of these units are on the board, and this is the battlefield, it's not just your opponent's row. So in the mirror match, these things come down really high. If there's just one unit on the board, this is coming down as a nine strength bronze. And when you're playing Nilfgaard, there's gonna be more than one. In the sil they got silvers, golds, bronzes, disloyal cards all over the place. You can't, I don't even know if you can play them all and be competitive. So you will have a lot of disloyal cards. This card is a high value bronze card. You play this in value, probably works really well with Combat Engineer as you can get this probably out 12, 15 sometimes. Very, very strong. Uh, Nilfgaard is about these huge swings with a lot of units, a lot of huge chunky units, not a lot of swarming like I said. They're either big or they're teeny tiny or they're disloyal with Nilfgaard. And this is a big one. I like this card a lot. I was playing it frequently around 12, 15. Uh, again, the values are not necessarily final. It may be two strength for each. They may not start at six, but I think whatever permutation they come to, this card will be strong and worth playing, especially in like a John Calvert or Morvran deck. The Impera Enforcers. 
Six strength on the range row. Gain three strength whenever either player uses a leader card. I am not crazy about this card. I think that the potential, like the ceiling for this card. Now, I will spoil something right now. There is a card in the set that actually refreshes the leader abilities. So, assuming that a leader ability is played four times in a single round, you might be able to get a lot of value as this card comes out at 18, I think, at this point. But I think the Emperor Brigade already does so much like this card for so less. So I don't think... I personally don't think this card is very good. I think that the ceiling is limited. Uh, your opponent probably... It's probably, like, it's only worth three strength to you if your opponent says, ah, you know what, I'm going to play my leader ability anyway. And your leader abilities on your opponent's side is probably worth three strength unless you manage to get them to whiff it, in which case you've got the stars to align and you're probably already winning. So I think this card is one of the worst cards uh, in the in the Nilf card set, and I think that it can probably be made better. Tweak it in some way. It, it functions off leader abilities, so I think you could probably get away with making the buff a little bit better or making them start not much higher. I mean, six is usually the standard for a card that has an ability to buff itself. I just feel like you can play around it, and uh, it's not that threatening, especially when there's other cards that are so much more threatening. It's just, it doesn't hold the slot, personally, for me. The Mangonel. This card's fun. This card is very much like a, like a, a Ballista-type card. So this is a or a trebuchet type card in, in that it is very similar to a trebuchet. Six strength siege unit machine. Remove two strength from a uh, random opposing unit whenever a card in either hand is revealed. So picture if you will, you play your Manganel, you play Emir, it's already worth 10. You play an alchemist, it pings for another two. You play another alchemist, it pings for another two. You find a way to refresh Emir's ability, there's another two. You can play more than one of these. It's very much like the Reinforced Ballista in Northern Realms or like kind of old trebuchets because every two turns, I think, in an Emir deck that's tuned to do a lot of revealing, you can reliably make this trigger quite a few times. And we still haven't seen all the cards that reveal cards. Whenever a card in either hand is revealed, keep that in mind. There are lots of ways to reveal your own cards, and there are cards that reveal many cards. Stay tuned. We will be getting into gold cards, and there's one that can reveal up to four. This card is... It's in the middle, I think. I think there's potential for this card to be good in an Emir deck, but I think outside of an Emir deck, you probably wouldn't bother playing it. And I think it, this is one of those remains to be seen cards. I think that this card has potential, but it's not one of the greatest cards. It has potential. Nausicaa Brigade. Six strength, ranged unit. Remove four strength from a spying non-gold unit on either side of the battlefield. If the unit was destroyed, gain four base strength. So much like the Black Infantry Arbalest, this is a card that interacts with spying units, ideally. Keep in mind, the Black Infantry Arbalest can do, uh, can remove two strength from any unit, not just a spying unit. However, its gains are lower, and the card itself is a little weaker. But this one has a stipulation. Starts at six, needs to hit a spying unit. You probably will have a spying unit on the board, and you probably have played Emissary and Ambassadors in a unit, in a deck that is running spies. So... You have a card here that is killing a unit, probably, because you have these small, the soil units, and it's gaining base strength. So it comes down as a 10 strength bronze that's removing four strength from the, the battlefield. It is strength of your creation, or it could be a spying unit that's causing you an issue on your side of the board. And there is a silver card in particular I'm thinking of that might you might want to do that for. So I think that there's a place for this card. I think if you had to pick this one or Black Infantry Arbalest in a deck that's all about disloyal units, you might want to pick this card because it's a bigger swing. It is base strength. Uh, and while you can't resurrect this card reliably because the Vikavara Medic is the only resurrection card in Nilfgaard and it pulls from your opponent's graveyard, much like monsters in that case, uh, I still think this card, ultimately, if you're going for strength removal, and there are other cards, not just the Emissaries and the Ambassadors. Keep in mind, there's going to be bigger cards that you can hit with this. But you do have to destroy it. That is the thing. So unless you're clocking right in at a fourth strength, this loyal unit, you will not necessarily get full value. But I think this card is good if you don't get full value. Uh, it's just a good bronze follow-up to the Ambassador and Emissary, I think. I think it's in the middle. Again, I think it's not the best card, but I think it might find a place in certain decks. The Spotter. Six strength, any row you want. Immune to weather, plus 
gain one strength for each revealed card in both players' hand. You're talking about like a 10, 12 strength weather immune unit coming down on any row in a meta in which I think weather is better. Buffs are better and weather is better because of now clear weather only removing one row's worth of weather. A lot of information coming at you folks at the same time, depending on which order you watch all these videos and consume this content uh, by. A lot of this may be new to you, but essentially you have a very strong weather immune unit that you can play the later in the game and the crazier things you do with Emir. But I don't even think you need Emir necessarily to make this card good. There are ways to reveal cards. Revealing cards will always be strong in their own way. And this card is made better for each revealed card. Very strong. Being weather immune is very strong. Think of them like ships at Skellige. Unassuming at first, turns out to be very strong in the future uh, in some archetypes. So don't, uh, don't shake your head at a weather immune unit ever, especially when you have stuff like Combat Engineer. Keeping these guys around, you can't weather them out. I think this is a better, this is a higher than average card. I think better than average. Uh, personally, I could be wrong on this one. It really depends on how weather shakes out in the meta. I think it's above average, personally. The Alba Pikeman. Seven strength melee unit immune to weather. That's it. Not a lot to say about this card in that it is very similar to the Spotter. I think the Spotter is better because I think the Spotter makes better use of a very strong mechanic that you're probably playing in Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard anyway, which is revealing cards in your opponent's hand. I like this. I like this card, but I think Spotter is better, and if I had to make the choice, I think I'd play the Spotter because you could play it on any row on top of that. It's good to have melee units that are immune to weather, though. Know. You'll notice it says immune to weather. Everything that was immune to some type of weather is now immune to all types of weather. That's pretty big. You can't ard. Ard is nerfed in that case, so you can't ard stuff into fog. Very important to note that part. Dareland foot soldiers are eight strength melee unit. No ability, starter unit, basically a Redanian uh, Knight. There is not much to say about it in that you would play this if you didn't have a better bronze to play or if you're focusing on kind of a big unit type deck. Uh, I'm not really sure necessarily how that would work. I wouldn't necessarily even play this above the Weather Immune unit on the melee row, and in that case, I'd probably play the Spotter anyway. But these are starter cards. Not every card has to be a blockbuster. It clocks in at eight where a bronze card should be. Starter deck with Nilfgaard, happy to play these cards, just like the Redanian Knights had some popularity at the very, 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 very beginning of the game. You will see some of these cards at the very, very, very beginning of your play experience against Nilfgaard. Last bronze card to tell you about, Nilfgaardian Knight. Sorry about this. This is the best photo I had of this card. Uh, this is an 11-strength bronze unit that reveals a card in your hand to your opponent. So you pay the price of giving that information to your opponent, but you get an 11-strength bronze. It gets better and better as the game... Actually, that's a lie. It doesn't get better and better as the game goes. It's always a fair disadvantage giving that information to your opponent. Generally, you don't want to give this kind of information to your opponent ever. But there are cards that get bonuses on all revealed cards in the battlefield. So if you're comfortable with giving that information to your opponent, you can run three of these. So there you have it, folks. Those are the bronzes and the leaders. Uh, 18 bronzes and three leaders. Uh, I got another video coming up for you right after this one. Part two, we're going to go through the silver cards and the gold cards for Nilfgaard. Check it out. Part two of the video uh, should be in the description below. Click on the link, and I'll, I'll see you on the other side. Thanks so much, everybody.